Okay, so how well do you actually understand powers and exponents? Well, if you really know powers and exponents, then you should be able to figure out the answer to this question pretty easily without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. We have a fraction, 1 fourth to the 3 halves power. This entire thing is equivalent to one of these answers over here. So let's take a look at our choices. So A is 1 eighth, B is 1 fourth, C is 2, and D is 4. All right, so once again, no calculators. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I will walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so uh, let's take another look at this problem. It seems like it's a pretty straightforward question. One fourth to the three halves power. Now we're not gonna use our calculator, but this entire expression right here is equivalent to one of these answers. And let's take a look at the correct answer right now. The correct answer is A, one eighth. All right, now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified professional expert in the properties of powers and exponents. So that's basically what this question is going to uh, really kind of check uh, your understanding on is can you work with the various properties and powers of exponents? This is a critical uh, topic, especially for those of you that are taking algebra. So it's possible uh, that some of you may not have yet studied this in your math course, but I'll review some of the um, properties that, of course, we need to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let's just go down here and think about the question in terms of uh, if we were able to use a calculator. So if you're saying, hey, Mr. U2 Math Man, I could definitely figure this out, but I got to get my calculator. I'm like, no problem. Get your calculator. How would you uh, plug this into your calculator to get the right answer? Well, uh, if you can answer this question, uh, go ahead and type that into the comment section, right? The best you can. But effectively, if we don't type this in properly into our calculators, it's possible we can get the wrong answer. Okay, so when we take a power uh, in our calculators, you're going to use one of a few different uh, buttons, okay? So let me go ahead and give you a simple example. Let's say you had two to the third power. Now, of course, we know, or hopefully you know, that this means two times two times two. So when we take a power, this little number up here is called an exponent. This bottom number is the base, and a power is basically saying, hey, multiply this number times itself this many times. So we're gonna take this two and multiply by itself three times. But uh, how do we plug this into our calculator? Well, you want to look for um, a few different keys. So this is probably uh, the most common. This is called a caret key. But this is how we bring up an exponent in our calculator. But there's other keys as well, like x to the y or y to the x. So you want to look uh, for one of these keys. It's possible you can have another key, but these are uh, probably the most common on like 99.9% .9 of the calculators out there. So let's use the caret key, this upside down V. So to plug this in, well, actually, it's just going to do 2 to the third power first. So you would type in a 2, then you would hit your care key like so, and then you would type in your 3, and then when you hit enter, you will see 8. Now, in this problem, you got to be very careful because we have fractions, not only as the base, but as the exponent as well. So don't uh, ever feel shy about using parentheses. So I would go parentheses. 1 divided by 4, okay, so that gives me the base, and then you have the caret button, parentheses, and then you type in 3 divided by 2. All right, so this is how you would actually uh, type this into your calculator, but the correct answer is 1 eighth. So you're going to get some sort of value that's going to be equivalent to 1 eighth, and you may not recognize that, but I wanted to just quickly review that uh, using your calculator sometimes you know, does require a little bit of knowledge and skill in and of itself, in and of itself, especially in more advanced mathematics. But in this particular problem, 
we are just going to use some old school math and that is just uh, our brains and a piece of paper and a pencil to figure this thing out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this right now. So here is our problem and uh, again, no calculator. So we might be kind of sad about that. All right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I want to use my calculator. Well, we are going to use uh, a calculator, just not an electronic calculator. You're going to use this uh, thing up here, this supercomputer. That's way better than any artificial intelligence. So we have a power, right? So this part of the power is a base. This is an exponent. And what we need to understand is some basic uh, properties of uh, powers and exponents. So let me go ahead and run through a few uh, right now. And then we'll kind of um, you know, build some momentum to figure this thing out. So what if I had uh, 2 squared uh, to the third power? Okay, now even if you uh, don't know these properties of uh, powers and exponents, what do you think we should do here? So we have 2 squared to the third power. Do you think the answer is 2 to the fifth? Maybe we should add these. Or maybe we should multiply 2 to the sixth. What do you think is correct? Well, let's uh, go ahead and just figure this out. And even if we never learn this, we could still get the right answer. So two squared cubed means what? Well, we're going to take two squared and we're going to multiply two squared by itself three times. So that's going to be two squared times two squared times two squared. So this is going to be what? Well, this is two times two, two times two, and the two times two. So we have two to the six. So the correct answer is two to the six. So if we come back over here and we look at this uh, problem, uh, the correct thing to do was to multiply the outside exponent to the inside exponent. So 2 squared to the third power is equal to 2 to the sixth. That's an illustration of a property of powers and exponents. And this is typically stuff that you learn in, uh, uh, generally speaking, like a pre-algebra course, certainly in Algebra 1 course. But even if you didn't know uh, these properties, you could still reason through with some just logic to kind of uh, reverse engineer and see these properties and actions. But I'm not going to cover all of them. Uh, we'll obviously use the ones that we need for this particular problem. But uh, this chapter in most math courses, well, it's actually like a full chapter or multiple sections. But uh, let's go ahead and get into the full solution right now. So here is our problem. We have one-fourth to the three-halves power. Okay, so we have an, an exponent. Uh, to this power right here. So how can we work with this? Well, an excellent strategy is to kind of write this fraction in such a way that we have a power in and of itself. So we're going to take one-fourth and we're going to write it as a power. So how can we do that? Well, some of you might recognize four as two squared. So I can literally write, write excuse me, one-fourth as one over two squared. So let's go ahead and do that. So instead of one-fourth, We'll write that as 1 over 2 squared. All right, so we have 1 over 2 squared, all of this to the 3 halves power. Well, this is still kind of confusing because we have this fraction here. Is there any way we can get rid of this fraction? Indeed, there is. We can write this in, in, a, uh, in a way where we don't have a numerator or denominator, okay? And I'm going to show you that right now. All right, so this is uh, a big, big part of uh, figuring this uh, problem out. So what we can do is when we have a fraction with a power, okay, we can take this power and put it on the other side of the fraction. So right now we have 2 squared in the denominator. I could put 2 squared in the numerator. The only thing I need to do is change the sign from positive to negative. And this is a huge uh, property of powers and exponents. And let me give you another example here. So if I have 2 to the negative 3, that's equal to 1 over 2 cubed. You see, 2 to the negative 3 power is over 1. So the rule, or the property, is when you have a power, if you put it on the opposite side of a fraction bar, the sign of the exponent changes. So it either goes from negative to positive or positive to negative. So here, I have this fraction. I have this 2 squared in the denominator. I'm like, you know what? I would love to just move it up in the numerator. Well, you can, but you're going to have to go from positive to negative, so let's do that. So we end up with 2 to the negative 2 over 1, but that's just nothing more than 2 to the negative 2 power. All right, so effectively we got rid of the fraction, and now we have 2 to the negative 2 power to the 3 halves. So remember, we've just uh, figured out, uh, by using this simple example, 2 squared to the third power, 
that we multiply the outside exponent to the inside exponent, okay? So here we have an outside exponent and an inside exponent, so we're gonna do the exact same thing. So three halves times negative two is negative three. Now, for those of you that are a little bit rusty on your fraction multiplication, what's going on here is what? Well, that's negative two over one times three over two. The twos cross cancel, and now I have negative this negative one or negative times three or negative three. All right, so all of this work got us down to two to the negative three power. We are almost done. Now remember, this is a multiple choice question, so two to the negative three power is not a, a, a choice that we can select from, so we're gonna have to take it a, a step further, and let's go and do that right now. But before we finish up this problem, I need you to do this, and that is so, uh, to support my YouTube channel. Now, why would you wanna do such a thing? Well, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, you're getting some sort of value out of my math instruction. But as a math teacher, I'm happiest when I'm helping as many people as I possibly can. Now, YouTube really does count, uh, you know, how many people subscribe to someone's channel. Uh, these things do count, all right? But when people subscribe, it actually allows me to grow my channel and reach more people. And that's why I make these videos. If this video can reach 100 people, well, that's fantastic. I would love to reach, you know, maybe 10,000 people, maybe 100,000 people, because believe me, there is a lot of people that struggle in mathematics. And my whole mission is to try to make math clear and understandable. By the way, if you're struggling with uh, anything, you know, in this particular video or in mathematics in general, a couple quick suggestions. One, I have a ton of content from basic math to advanced math on my channel, but also you may want to check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video and the things that we're talking about here, uh, the best course uh, for you to check out would be like my pre-algebra, algebra one or a math skills rebuilder course. All right, don't forget to uh, hit that notification button as well so you can get my latest videos. Now let's go ahead and finish this problem up because now this is going to be pretty straightforward. All right, so remember we got to two to the negative two and we have the three halves power and we already kind of determined or we figured out this property of exponent that an outside exponent times the inside exponent, uh, we have to multiply. So this is equal to two to the negative three power. But remember, we just had this property of uh, writing um, or changing um, a, uh, a power by putting on the opposite side of um, a fraction bar by changing the sign. Okay, I kind of stumbled on that for a second, but like two to the third is equal to one over two to the negative three. So two to the negative three is the same thing as two to the negative three over one if we want to think of it that way. And let's get rid of this negative right now. And the way we can do that is to think of this as a fraction over one now we'll put this thing down in the denominator. And when we do that, it's gonna go from negative to positive. So two to the negative third power is equal to one over two to the third power. And this we understand as two times two times two, which of course is eight. So we now we have uh, the fraction one over eight, which of course is one of the answers that we were looking for. Now remember um, up here when we were talking about using our calculators, I uh, would have to be able to see that answer as the equivalent answer, one eighth. But here's the thing, even if you know how to use your calculator, that's fantastic, but you still need to know these properties because you can be dealing with um, uh, all sorts of variable situations like two over x to the, oh, I don't know, three fifths power or x squared, two over x squared. See, when you have variables, you're not gonna be able to kind of plug those uh, things in to your calculators. You're simply gonna have to know these uh, uh, properties of powers and exponents. But uh, anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.